Hey everybody, um, Dr. Greg Schmadies here, um, coming to you from the operating room. I, I wanted to um, just make a few comments on the censorship of uh, Dr. Stock's talk uh, at the Mount Vernon School Board. Um, we are seeing a, a huge rise in censorship of the medical community. People just kind of rank and file people uh, such as myself. Uh, coming to you tonight, not not claiming to be a, a world expert on anything. I'm just a kind of an ordinary surgeon um, here in New Mexico. Um, you know, I, j I just got done, uh, you know, operating on some on some patients here today. That's just kind of what I do. Uh, I help people breathe better. Um, and um, but it, it it's alarming. It is alarming that we are seeing uh, YouTube, especially as well as some other uh, sites and and social media. Um, um, companies uh, censor people like me and so I want to just get on here and kind of <laughs> give you my two cents uh, number one I don't think Mount Vernon should have been uh, censored I don't think there's any sort of dangerous information or, or quote-unquote misinformation uh, in that video uh, and we're going to talk about some other uh, doctors that have been censored as well uh, who, who have uh, been very brilliant uh, very uh, uh, positively respected people in their communities um, but first, let, let's go to the Mount Vernon video uh, for a second. So, you know, if you, if you look online, you have the, these, these supposed fact checkers and, and some local media. Uh, interesting that national media hasn't really picked it up, but, but some very uh, just kind of local Indianapolis media that's picked it up. And if, if you watch closely and read closely, you'll actually notice that they actually don't refute any of Dr. Stock's claims. Uh, they make some straw man arguments. The Indy Star says it's, you know, they, they have some quotes that say it's, it's misinformation uh, or it's quote unquote just false and they, and they have these other doctors that have the quotes, but they actually don't cite any evidence at all. Uh, I find that very remarkable. Um, and, and they don't uh, come up with any sort of, of credible arguments. They just say, oh, the, the guy's not, not credible, so just ignore him, nothing to see here. That's not what medicine's about. That's not what, what, what I was trained to do. I was trained to sit down with people and share your ideas. Uh, this is a very serious thing. People are getting sick. Uh, now we have the, 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 the vaccine that, um, and, and I quote here from a study that was funded by Pfizer, uh, preprint, meaning it hasn't even been published yet. And I quote, gradually declining trend in vaccine efficacy, end quote. So we have a doctor in Indianapolis that questions kind of the vaccine narrative. And uh, we have a lot of people treat him very, very poorly and just say, oh, don't, don't listen to him. Th th that is insane. It, it's, it's really disappointing. Um, and, and so I wanted to go through a couple of things and, and offer my thoughts um, on what's going on uh, with, with COVID and, and the vaccine, but more importantly, what's going on in the field of medicine. Um, and we've, we've got to have more, more people stand up for our, um, our, our profession and I think instead of kind of this, this yelling at each other, we, we've got to sit down and, and, and just listen to people and have active debate. That's how we're going to beat this thing. That's how we're going to achieve health uh, as a society is uh, listening to people and, and coming up with good ideas. And so I, I think that this guy in Mount Vernon has some good ideas. Um, and yeah, he, he says a lot of things negative about the vaccine, um, which I think a lot of people don't like. And so they're like, hey, if, if you say anything negative about the vaccine, let's just censor you. Uh, well, I think we should be better than that. And so, um, you know, another thing on, on factcheck.org, uh, which apparently is funded through the University of Pennsylvania, they say they try to dispute his claim that vaccines don't prevent infection. Absolute lie. Absolute lie. I think they've been watching too many, you know, Star Wars movies or something. They, they think that a, that a vaccine is like a force field that just bounces, you know, the, <laughs> the virus away from you. The, that's, that's ridiculous. The, uh, what vaccines do is they give your immune system a leg up that they give your immune system this, this information ahead of when the, when the bad guy comes, right? When the invader comes and, uh, you know, the virus comes and your immune system says, ha, I've already got a leg up and I'm going to make these antibodies. I'm going to activate these T cells and we're going to fight you off without getting sick. So what the, what Dr. Stock is saying is he's saying, Hey, that's, that's an infection. The, the virus has infected a vaccinated person, but they didn't really get sick because the vaccine helped them. Okay. That, that's what he's saying. There's nothing wrong with saying that. So the fact check people, um, I, I really don't know where they're coming with uh, at, at with any of this stuff, uh, but but it's just wrong. It's wrong to slander this guy uh, who's who's trying to just you know give his honest opinion as a physician, uh, kind of like what I'm trying to do tonight. So so we've already seen in a in a very uh, 
uh, hot off the presses um, uh, publication, a, like I said, quote unquote, gradually declining trend in vaccine efficacy, okay, funded by Pfizer. So that's, that's a problem, right? And so let's, let's kind of see where we're at uh, with, with the vaccine. First of all, do I think the vaccine is doing what it was designed to do? Well, yes. I mean, it, it was designed to elicit antibodies uh, to a spike protein for this, this current iteration of, of virus. Um, will it do that um, in the future? Well, we, we don't know, but we do know that we, we are seeing from Pfizer saying it's gradually uh, uh, declining. So um, I, I think we need to really rethink things, and, and hopefully some of my thoughts will, will, be, um, will be helpful. Uh, first of all, let, let's start out with natural immunity, okay? People that have recovered from COVID, what, what do we see from that? What, what do we see from the um, amazing immune response uh, from, from people? Well, here, here's a quote from a, uh, from a recently published study. Quote, we see broad and frequently strong SARS-CoV-2, CD8, and CD4 positive T cells. Those are kind of the main types of T cells. T cell responses were seen in the majority of patients. Okay, so we're, we're seeing good immune response and good durable uh, immunity uh, from people that recover from COVID. Uh, here's another quote from a, 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 a recent publication. We're seeing, quote, broad and effective immunity in recovered COVID-19 patients. Okay, these are not vaccinated people. I'm, I'm talking about natural immunity here. Okay, broad and effective immunity in recovered COVID-19 patients. All right. Um, so, and what are, what are people saying about natural immunity? Well, what they're doing, what smart scientists are doing right now is actually they're, they're looking at the natural immunity, how a healthy person's body develops immunity to the COVID-19 virus. And then they're kind of trying to replicate that. They're trying to piggyback onto that. Okay. And so, um, here's a, here's a, a study of a, of a scientist that's doing just that. And let me share this with you. CD4 positive T cell responses equally target several COVID proteins. Let me stop there. A, a, a natural immunity, think of, of this like a Rubik's cube, okay? And, and you're, you're, you're getting immunity to all these different surfaces, all these different types of proteins, whereas vaccines are giving you immunity to the spike protein, okay? Just one, just one. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not claiming that that is gonna change any clinical outcomes. I, I'm just telling you the facts, okay? So, so this study says that T cell responses uh, equally target several COVID proteins, whereas the CD8 tell, C, T cell responses preferentially target the nuclear protein. And get this, here, here's the key, highlighting the potential importance of including the nuclear protein in future vaccines. Okay, why is that so profound? Well, now what people, and, and my prediction, by the way, is that what we're going to see in the next, in the coming years is we're gonna to refer to the vaccines that are out now as first generation vaccines. First generation vaccines that just targeted one protein. Um, I, I think that they're not gonna do what we think they're going to do. Um, I think natural immunity is going to be more robust because it's already been shown to, to, uh, um, to be more robust in, uh, in these uh, sorts of studies that we have now, the knowledge that we have now. Um, and I think that we're going to have second generation and third generation vaccines to the coronavirus as people try to target uh, more proteins and, and more, uh, you know, to develop more what's called um, epitopes from, you know, to the, to, the, um, to the virus. And of course, it's a moving target, right? And so that's really where I wanted to go at is, is what is the overall strategy here? And that's why I think Mount Vernon should not have been censored because the, the guy is, is just questioning the narrative. If we look at the big picture, what is he really doing? He's, he's really just questioning, are the vaccines doing what we want to do? He, he never told anybody, don't get a vaccine. He never said it's not going to help anybody. What I would personally hope for is that in the next, you know, hopefully second and third generation vaccines, I, I'm hoping that they could be used to help people that are high risk for COVID. People that are, you know, whatever you want to say, 75 and up, people that have health problems. Um, but people that, that don't have those things, people that are not generally, uh, generally uh, vulnerable to COVID, uh, I just don't, don't see a reason why they need a vaccine. And I, don't, I see zero reason why people with natural immunity need a vaccine. When we've already shown, and like I said, I quote, broad and effective 
uh, immunity in recovered COVID-19 patients. There are so many papers out this now, out out this out there like this now that uh, that ind indicate this. That indicate that natural immunity is durable, it's long-lasting, it's robust, and it gives you all this you know immunity to all these different types of proteins instead of remember instead of just one. Um, is the vaccine so far shown to be safe? Yes, absolutely. These vaccines have been shown to be safe, um, with, with some exception. I mean, we have to be, we have to be honest. I mean, um, there has been uh, some complications in kids, and there's a, a, a very, very, um, I think, realistic discussion that needs to happen in the medical community. And I'm not here to make any claims tonight. I'm just going to say that, look, kids are so low risk for COVID-19, so low risk. Does that does the benefit, does the tiny, tiny benefit from a child getting a vaccine outweigh the risks, the tiny risk of getting a vaccine? Do those outweigh each other or not? And I think that's a very legitimate question to ask when we've seen kids develop myocarditis. We've seen kids die after getting the vaccine. It's very, very rare. But also, what is also very, very rare is, is a kid developing severe morbidity and mortality from a natural COVID-19 infection, especially in a, in a healthy kid. So where, where, am I, where am I hoping from just where I see it? Where do I hope we're going to? Where are we headed? I hope that we will develop more sophisticated, more robust vaccines that can be used in a more targeted way for people that are actually vulnerable to COVID. I think we need to stop the vaccine mania, uh, in, especially with people that already have natural immunity and people that are otherwise healthy and not at risk um, in, in general. We need to stop talking about mandating vaccines for kids when uh, COVID-19 is not generally a, a pediatric disease. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I want to circle back at where I began as I close. Um, we've got to stop censoring the medical community. We've got to listen to people's ideas. Uh, a lot of people that have really good ideas out there and nobody has all, all, the, all the, uh, the answers, just like I don't have all the answers. Uh, but we've got to stop censoring. Peter McCullough, who is a very well-respected cardiologist. He published a paper along with 56 other authors, okay? This is 57 total authors in a peer-reviewed study. He published a paper last year showing a, an, a treatment algorithm, an early treatment algorithm for COVID. And he got on YouTube and, uh, and explained his, uh, his, his paper to help other physicians get people early treatment for COVID, people that were high risk, and, and to help these people not go to the hospital. And what happened? His, his video was shut down from YouTube. And, and I quote, it says, YouTube does not allow content that explicitly disputes the efficacy of local health authorities or the World Health Organization. So we're in the midst of a pandemic and you're telling me that we can only listen to a couple of people. We're gonna, we're gonna suddenly shrink everyone, everyone's uh, ideas and, and our, our all of our knowledge and all of our diverse backgrounds, we're, we're gonna just, just kind of laser focus it and only listen to a, a, a very narrow group of people. That, <laughs> that doesn't sound smart. That doesn't sound like somebody that's wanting to actually help people to me. It sounds like people are just uh, wanting to, to hear what, what they wanna hear, you know? Um, very, very dangerous and I think deadly for, for many people. And I noticed that here in my practice in New Mexico as I was fielding calls from people whose physicians, honestly, and I hate to say this, deserted them, absolutely deserted them when they had a, a positive COVID-19 test. They said, just go home and, and we'll hope for the best. When these people were at risk, they were high risk for developing uh, like a severe inflammatory response and, and they, they didn't offer them any sort of treatment. So the bottom line here is stop censoring us. Stop censoring physicians that are, are asking reasonable questions. And yeah, maybe someone like me is going to say something negative about the vaccine, but, but that's fine. You know, I, I, we all want the best for our children. We want the best for our families. Uh, we want to see people get over this virus, and we don't want to see people die. Um, but, but, but stop just uh, this kind of vitriol. That's what we need to do, and that's my pledge to any other physicians that, that are watching this video, is let, let's sit down and actually talk, uh, talk to each other, um, and, and see how we can, how we can just do, do our best. And let's, let's look at the data, okay?